Well, as they say, usually the Japanese do it better. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Godzilla Minus One. Oh, there's been a lot of talk about it, so I went and saw it myself. First off, for those who have been wondering what the Minus One comes from, I have had some discussion with other friends who have seen the movie, and the idea is very central to the plot of the film. Minus One, this derives from Japan after they drop the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, after they were defeated, so they're at zero. They are at the pit of despair and loss. And now this giant radioactive lizard fucker comes out of the ocean and starts fucking with them about, so now they are minus one. They are even in more in the hole than they were before. And that idea of coming together in the utmost of despair is the central theme throughout the movie. And this film does what we've been wanting from a lot of the MonsterVerse movies, is a character that you care about. Not since Brian Cranston got for some reason killed off in Godzilla, have we cared about a human character in any of the monster burst movies of the last while you could say that there are some characters you might care about in shin godzilla but really that film is more about the idea of the society and government coming together to take on what would be the most realistic version of a event like that minus one is central about people who have dealt with grief who have dealt with loss who have dealt with uh, dishonor and guilt and how they combat that the film's main character is this kamikaze pilot who was too scared to do what he was supposed to do. He chickened out and he comes to this island where then Godzilla first attacks and there's a moment where he can he thinks he can do something and again he is too scared to do it. And then after the war ends he comes home and he finds everything in ruins and he just can't get rid of that guilt. He is trying to find means to deal with it like helping out this girl and this this little baby that she has taken on herself to take care of because the parents died because a lot of people died after the bombs dropped but he still can't get rid of that guilt no matter what he does and then Godzilla rears his head again and that guilt and that PTSD start to come back and then the film starts to central upon the idea of how they take care of Godzilla. Godzilla is the villain of this movie. The human characters, not just the main character but the girl, the baby, the friends that the pilot meets along the way uh, while doing his boat job, you care about all of them. You have a vested interest in all of them. You have a vested amount of care for these characters and that's rare to say because Usually that has not happened in these movies, and you're interested in the strife, you're interested in their goals and their lives, and you don't want them to die. You are actually concerned about their well-being. And I keep saying this, but that's again what the movie is about. It is about Japan learning to change their ways, whereas the war, it was about honor, and basically doing whatever, including dying, for it. For the honor of the country and now they are turning it around this isn't about honor this is about survival and they want to try and do what they need to do but still live to see it to experience what they have left to be able to rebuild because you can't do that when you're dead and that's the basis of the movie i honestly had a few moments that i was like damn this is hitting me way more than I thought it would. As for Godzilla, he's not in this movie that much. He's almost, I would say, about the same amount of time that he was in the 2014 American Godzilla movie. It just worked better because again, he is the antagonist and you are far more focused on the villains and when Godzilla does appear, his scenes are much more impactful. Now there is one thing I do wanna say. There have been a lot of people who have been talking about how this movie is like just showing how terrible CG use in Hollywood is. There is some argument for that. This film was supposedly made off of 15 million, but apparently even then the director says that he wishes he had that much money, but that's kind of a rumor from what I've gathered, so don't quote me on it. But regardless, that's still far less than any of the Marvel movies, which usually vary around $200 million. But there are a few factors. One, there's, as far as I know, no big name Japanese actor in this movie. Two, Godzilla is not in it that much, so there is not a lot of CG in it. And three, when he does appear, the CG is good in some spots. It's a bit and others like there are some uh, additional elements that look like the straight out of a straight to DVD movie so that's what you get when you have a, l a budget this low in terms of CG work but there are some shots particularly when Godzilla is on the horizon of the ocean and say he's coming after a boat or something 
his blending with the water is really good. When it's above top down looking down, it's so much more noticeable. And there are some bits where he kind of just moves like, do I feel that the budget for current day American Hollywood movies is stupidly high? Absolutely. Especially when supposedly She-Hulk, an episode of She-Hulk was worth this movie. Yeah, there, there's some weird budget use going around. It's not the be all end all. The, the effects aren't that astounding. They're good for what it's worth. But to say that they're like, they're beating Hollywood movies, no. There still is this level, but that is a discussion in itself about the disuse and the mistreatment of VFX studios. And there are a lot of movies, both in the recent years and to come that you could even make that kind of argument for, but I'm getting way off topic. Godzilla Minus One is a fun, good Godzilla movie that you care about the characters, you care about the story, and you enjoy it, it hits you. Godzilla is a great antagonist in this movie and a driving force for the main characters and the secondary characters to come together after such a tumultuous event such as uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So in the end, I'm gonna give Godzilla minus one a five out of seven. It's definitely in my honorable mentions for the year. I don't know if I would watch it again, but I still gotta commend it. It's still really good. If you have a chance to go and see it in theaters, I absolutely would recommend it especially when uh, his atomic breath is used. It's a little different than in other movies, and I really like how they did it in this movie. Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. Love to know what you guys have to say. What do you think? Is this your favorite new Godzilla movie? Do you have a favorite one? What do you think between this one and Shin Godzilla? For those of you who are kind of wondering about how the movie ends, it's like, oh, is there going to be a sequel? Shin Godzilla did the same thing this one did, and Shin never got a sequel. So I don't really think this one's ever going to get a sequel either. They just like to do that kind of tease idea. So anyways, let me know. Love to see what you guys have to say. Thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you liked it. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more content like this, please subscribe. Until then, see you guys next time.